Hi, welcome to this episode of the Lady Stairs Knits podcast. I'm Sarah and I'm really excited to show you about all the stuff I've been making. Um, I was talking to someone on Instagram, their username is Series of Loops, about the term knitting podcast because it's clearly a video and not a podcast. And I was saying that I like to think of it sometimes as like a baker's dozen. So not really a podcast but just sort of a turn, turn of phrase. But now it's always in my mind when I say the word podcast. Um, it's a pretty overcast day in Edinburgh, uh, though the sun has just come out from behind the clouds, but there's been audible wind all day. So hopefully it will stay sunny. And I'm already holding the first thing to show you. It's my first finished object, which is my paint, my basket weaver, painting baskets socks by the design is by Stephen West and I am knitting through all of the pairs of socks in Stephen West's 2023 year of socks and this is the fourth pattern that I finished so here they are they look a little bit scrunchy but that's just because this is quite a springy stitch pattern and it's much shorter than the stockinette which is on the bottom of the foot but I think that it will be it well I know that it's totally fine on the foot because when I wear it it's totally fine it stretches out the top and also as the bottom kind of felt um, that will shrink up in length a little bit so here it is on the foot I don't know if that's a good way to show you. <laughs> There's an Airbnb in my building, which is actually not legal. You're not allowed to have Airbnbs in Edinburgh in buildings that share a front door. And it's like, it feels very unsafe to me when people that I don't know like run up behind me to try and get in my front door with me. or when they asked me to, that was someone staying in the Airbnb, wanting me to buzz them into the building. There's only six flats in the building. Anyway, I'll save my rent for in person, but I would never, I don't want to leave someone outside in the rain, but also like, it feels very unsafe to be letting strangers into the building. Um, especially since right now I'm moving on my own. So, it always riles me up a little bit when the buzzer goes and it's people asking me to buzz them into the building because I really don't like that there's an Airbnb and it's not even allowed. So, anyway, back to the knitting after I'll try and calm down a bit. So, I made these socks out of woolly mammoth fiber yarn. It's a no nylon non-superwash sock base that I've used before in a, the painting triangle socks that I made and I really like it. I had a kind of knitter's block with these socks. I just wasn't enjoying it. I think the colors just were feeling not that much fun or something. I didn't love knitting the stitch pattern but they're done now which I'm very happy about and um, I think that they do look very nice. I did I changed the garter stitch flap in the pattern to a slip stitch heel flap um, just because I find that that wears better especially with the this yarn and um, I used a mini skein for the brown and I ended up with less than a gram left over so playing a little bit of yarn chicken but it ended up totally fine in the end. Just did a normal wedge toe. And I do a slip knot cast on for my socks, which is my favorite cast on kind of for anything. I, I first learned about it in the Easy Peasy Sock, Easy Peasy Sock Pattern by Tabitha Winters, which was the sock pattern I used to make my first pair of socks. And I really like it. I don't know if it's that popular, but it's awesome. So. Totally would recommend if you're looking for a starting pattern to make a pair of socks and it's yeah the slip knot cast on. It's really stretchy and it doesn't flare at all. It's kind of fiddly but totally worth it in my opinion. Um, 
so this is my only finished object, but I'm very happy with these, especially since I cast them on, I think, at the beginning of May? I'm a couple socks behind, but I'm just being okay with it. I don't want to stress myself out about the year of socks. That would be ridiculous. So I'll show you my next work in progress is sort of related. And when I say sort of, I mean entirely related. Um, so it's the next pair of socks in the Stephen West 2023 year of socks. And it is the painting honeycomb sock. So I got quite a lot of this done. This week, I have spent most of the week in England. My grandmother's in hospital and she's quite unwell. So I went with my dad to go visit her, um, which felt very important to do. It was really great to see her and sort of, I don't know, just be with her a little bit um, right now. But it was also a pretty sort of sad and distressing trip. Um, they, my family that lives in England lives in Worcester, which is about, uh, well, it's about four hours on the, four to five hours on the train to Birmingham and then one hour on a different train to Worcester. So a moderate train ride. Um, I had quite a lot of schoolwork to be doing, but I, I found it quite difficult to work on the train this trip. I was just kind of nauseous. I think it's just the stress and all of that sort of thing. So I spent a lot of the time knitting and I, <laughs> I don't know why I'm enjoying this sock when I wasn't enjoying the last sock. I'm just loving knitting this sock. At first I was like, this, this is a bit of a cop-out, Stephen, because the painting brick socks are so similar to the painting honeycomb socks. I felt like this shouldn't be a whole separate sock, but I can't complain anymore because I've just really enjoyed knitting these. Um, I still think that they're quite similar, but... Um, they're just really fun to knit. I think I love this yarn as well, which is so funny because one of the yarns is actually the same as in the other sock. The light, well, I guess the medium blue is the same. This purple is um, John Arbin Exmoor sock in the color Bluth. They have great names for their sock colorways and it's so gorgeous. I really like that you can buy this yarn in 50 gram balls because I, I pretty much never need more than 50 grams unless I'm gonna use a yarn for more than one pair of socks. Um, and here, so here are the, and then this is the same Woolly Mammoth Yarns Hearth Sock and I just love them together. This yarn has nylon in it and it's also got a bit more of a like a, a coarser hand. Um, it feels quite a bit more durable than the Woolly Mammoth Sock Yarn. The Woolly Mammoth Sock Yarn is durable for, for being an, a no superwash, no nylon sock, but the nylon just adds so much durability that it you can really tell the difference. Um, so it's pretty nice to be using this as my background color and then I'll use this for the toes and heels and the contrast color. So hopefully I'll do a little bit less mending with this. I think that I was enjoying knitting this too much because I've knit the leg, I think, two honeycombs longer than I ideally would want it, but it's fine. I'll just keep going. It fits. I just have been kind of liking socks that are sort of medium length. Um, so I, I used, again, the slip knot cast on. I always want to say slip stitch, but it's not a slip stitch, it's a slip knot. I knit about an inch and a half two by two ribbing, and then I did um, a row of plain knit. I also, I don't cast on the numbers that Stephen West says to cast on, because in his, Many of his socks have a really thick double folded cuff, which I don't want in my socks. So I cast on my normal amount, which is 64. 
And then after the ribbing, I will increase or decrease to the size that I want. And I've learned that I should probably be making the third size, although I made kind of a mistake and I'm knitting the second size. It's fine, I just think if it was the third size, it would be a little bigger, I don't know. Probably after wearing these one or two times, they'll be exactly what I want. But when I pull them on, they're like a little tight over the heel. I guess that's what I mean. So I did a row of plain, which gives you the separation between the ribbing and the painting honeycombs pattern. And I really like this. It's such a cool textural, hello, textural stitch pattern. Um, the heel flap is a slip stitch heel flap. I tried to do an eye of partridge, but I think I messed up the um, alternating slip stitches too many times for it to actually look like an eye of partridge. Hello, this is little Fergus. Oh, don't care, don't fall over. Yeah, I just think that these colors look amazing together. And I've been enjoying working on this. So you'll probably see that finished or further progressed in my next video. I am still working on that video series where I'm sort of vlogging each sock, but um, I just haven't gotten around to editing any of the others yet. I think now I've finished two pairs that haven't had videos. So, but I have been recording for them. I really like putting those together. And I think it'll be really cool at the end of the year to have all 13. It's a year of socks, so one comes out every month, but there is one bonus pattern beforehand. Can I take this away? Yeah, so the John Arbin sock yarn has 10% now, and I, I, ooh, it, it's, and some of the wool in it is super washed, but some of it isn't. So I guess that means you, have to treat it like it's non superwash because would some of the wool shrink up? I don't know. Hello. I have a pretty interesting smelling face, I've been told. I love this yarn. I would rec this is my favorite sock yarn. <laughs> I've made a pair of socks in this. I think I talked about them on my channel last summer. It was a test knit for stone knits and they were the sunflower rising socks which I gave to a friend so I've never actually gotten to wear a pair of socks made out of this yarn but I loved working with it both times. I think that the combination of that yarn with the woolly mammoth yarn is really hitting the spot for me so maybe I'll get another color for my next ball of yarn. Is that that might be excessive but who knows I'm not gonna think about it until I'm there. I hand wound that ball so I can't knit them two at a time, although I kind of want to, but I don't want to cut the yarn when I don't need to. So I'll just knit them one at a time. And I never talk about this, but this really cute pouch, I just got that, like, I got it when I was a young teenager at Forever 21 for three dollars and I've used it almost every day since then. Um, I don't think Forever 21 exists anymore but it's a really cute little bag. I like the little eyes and I like the color. Um, I'll show you my next new work in progress which I also started on this trip. So I started those on the train ride down to Worcester and I brought two projects with me um, just in case I felt like I wanted to switch it up, which I did, so I'm really glad that I brought the two projects. If you are a returning viewer, you might recognize this because I've made this exact hat before in the same yarn, although this is a different size. Um, but I did say last time that I liked it and I wanted to make another one. So this is the Manhattan hat. 
I'll put a picture of what it looks like when it's done because I was looking for mine but I think I have it in like my winter hat storage so um, I couldn't find it easily to show you but it's basically just a big long ribbed hat that you can either knit to fold up once or twice or I guess not at all um, and then it has some sort of interesting decreases at the top it's made for DK weight or Aran weight and I'm using this yarn held double. It's the Cricut yarn. I don't remember what company makes it, but it's quite a popular company. But I have seen this yarn very rarely. Um, I think that it's a beautiful looking yarn. It's got a lot of tweedy flecks in it, big tweedy flecks um, of red, like red, green, black. And it's sort of this rust color that has this beautiful, sh almost sheen to it. Um, and it's a superwash merino. The problem with it is that it's um, very fragile. Um, and I guess I should have known because it's a single play yarn. Um, but it's like it's hard to weave in the ends because it's fragile, uh, which is kind of surprising to me. So I had originally bought sweater quantity of it in a little bit of an impulse decision, um, just because it looked so stunning in the skein. I decided to forego my rule of no single ply garments ever again. But yeah, I got home, I knit up a swatch. The, since the yarn is very bumpy and fragile, it's quite difficult to make it because you have to knit it on quite a fine gauge as it's fingering weight. So I was using a three millimeter needle and that was not giving me a dense fabric. That was very much the appropriate size density, like needle size. And I'm a pretty normal tensioned knitter. So, um, so it is quite a fine yarn, but it was just, it's kind of hard to pull through because the tweed lumps are very substantial, if you can see that. Anyway, so holding it double really helps. It strengthens it and it evens out, you know, like, because there's, it's unlikely that two tweedy lumps will be in the exact same spot. So it gives it a little bit more of an even and therefore um, less precarious knitting situation, um, which is really working in my favor. I just decided after knitting this swatch that I didn't want to make a sweater, a sweater out of it. It would just have taken so much time. And I know that single play yarn doesn't wear that well in garments because I have made a garment out of single play yarn and it hasn't worn very well. Um, so yeah, I made the first hat a couple months ago, I think in March. And it's really nice, I love it. The cast one is a little bit too tight, but nothing really to, it's not like that notable, if that makes sense. Um, but this time I did a different cast on. I did Twisted German in the last one. And this one I did alternating cable cast on, which I learned because I made the link tat, which is a really beautiful cable pattern by Taylor Owen, who has a podcast on YouTube, knitting and gardening podcast called A Thread to Mend. So yeah, that was a really cool pattern. It's got like quite interesting cabling. So I learned this cast on there. It's stretchy and it's the same from both sides. So I thought it would be good because I think I'm going to make this one to be one fold, but quite a deep one fold. And I made one size bigger than last time. Originally, I was going to make this for one of my dads because when I was wearing it, he had complimented it. And I always make my other dad stuff because he is just the most knitworthy person ever. He always wears the stuff that I make him until he leaves on the train. And then it's gone forever. But until he leaves the stuff inevitably on the train, he's like wearing it every day. My other dad doesn't really he does wear the stuff I make him, but not very often. And if I give him something, the first dad will always wear it. It's confusing because I haven't told you their names. But 
Anyway, but I worry that he feels left out because I don't make him so much stuff because he doesn't wear it that much. So he complimented the hat and he said he would quite like one. So I made a mental note that I would make him one because the first hat took about one and a quarter balls of yarn, skeins of yarn, so like 125 grams held double. Um, and that was for like a really long hat. So I was, I definitely have enough to make another one size bigger hat, even if I did make it the same length. Cause I bought, did I already say this? I bought three skeins for a sweater quantity at 400 meters each. Whoa, my brain was moving pretty slowly there for a second. Okay, anyway. I cast this on because I really couldn't be bothered knitting the heel flap anymore and I've done about five inches, just under five inches of this. It's just one by one ribbing. Um, it's a pretty dense gauge for the yarn health double. This is 3.75 millimeter needles and uh, that's what it recommends in the pattern to do. I still find this yarn to be a little bit precarious to work with, but it's a lot better. Um, and I am going to just keep going. Oh, the end of the story about this being for my dad is I asked him what he thought of it when I started knitting this a few months after he'd initially said he wanted one. And he said, oh, that's nice, but I'd never wear that color. So I guess I will give this to someone else. And um, that's okay. I'm glad that he told me instead of just accepting it as a gift and never wearing it because that's so annoying when people do that. I've made so many hats for so many people in my life and I don't, I'm not saying people have to wear the things all the time, obviously, but if someone's never worn the thing that I made them that they had input onto what it looks like and they're asking me for more stuff, I'm not going to make it for them. <laughs> or I'll give it a very long lead time um, because I like to prioritize the people who I know will get a ton of wear out of the thing that I make them. So yeah, I don't know who this will go to, but it will go to someone. There's lots of, there's even though I made hats for a lot of people, there's still a lot of people that I care about and would like to keep their heads warm. And I already have the exact same one, so it would be fun to match someone. Um, and it's great to use up this wool that I was feeling a little bit guilty about having bought a sweater quantity um, and turning it into like something that's really nice and wearable. So that is this. It goes quite quickly, which is a bit surprising. I don't know. And I don't mind the rib on the small circumference. Normally when I'm working on a jumper, I really don't like knitting the rib at the bottom, but in the hat I'm not minding it so much, so that's nice. I was really glad that I brought an extra project down to Worcester with me, um, because yeah, a lot of knitting time on the train, as, as I said I was a bit too nauseous to do reading on the train, and then I was just so tired at the end of the day. It's quite tiring being in hospital. I'm sure it's really tiring being a patient in a hospital, but it's very tiring as a visitor as well because it's always like too hot or too cold and you have to be so alert and you're, I was always like sitting kind of awkward like I want to be helpful but I also don't want to be in the way um, and so my gran also who's the person who is in hospital is sort of the only knitter that I know in real life and although she didn't teach me how to knit she has always knit stuff for everyone in the family and um, yeah is just a wonderful person and knitter. I made her a jumper about three years ago. I made her the arboreal jumper by Jennifer Steingass and she really liked that. I think she was quite pleased because nobody ever makes her stuff because she's always loved making people's stuff. So it was fun to bring my knitting to the hospital to knit next to her although she's not able to knit at the moment. Um, and I didn't expect to get this much done on the trip, but I did. So I have two projects left to show you. One of them 
I haven't worked on very much since I last recorded, although I have spent, there were like a good few days. And then it got really hot in Edinburgh and I just could not bear to have this anywhere near my body anymore. And that is my Nutogen Semper sweater. So I'll show you. It's so pretty. I really love this jumper. Um, here it is. I hope that you can see it nice, nicely. Um, so I think when I last recorded, I hadn't split for the sleeves yet. So now I've split for the sleeves and it's going really well. I, I'm pretty sure I remember holding up the blue sort of um, progression that I was going to do. So now that's been completed and I knit down into those, into those blues, so through that smooth gradient. And the background color is this purple. I'm choosing to make it go into the sort of muddy areas in the Nudidin color Viravon, because I got a lot of plates that went from green to red or the other way around. So a lot of it was really muddy with this sort of green, red, brown color, not like brown, but when you're sort of squinting at it, it looks a bit brown. So, but that color actually melded really well with this lighter purple. And I don't know what color the lighter purple is. A lot of this is either Viravan or it's the Lucky Charms or extras that I was sent when I ordered Nugeten. Um, but this medium purple is infinitive and this color blue is one that I purchased. That was actually the very first nudid and I ever bought. That's Val. Um, and I think that this medium blue is Stila. And there was one color last, I don't remember. It's like sometime last autumn, end of summer. And it was like orange and blue mixed together and it was just so beautiful it was totally sold out by the time i got there but i did get a little piece of it as part of um the lucky charms that i ordered so that is in here too i don't remember what it's called maybe like live or something but there's just tons of colors in here so i don't know where i'm gonna go next as i said it's been really hot in Edinburgh and the idea of having this on my lap just like makes me want to cry. I've been taking exclusively showers as cold as they will go for about two weeks. Ye yesterday it got a little cooler and today it's really windy. So it's giving the atmosphere of it being cooler. I'm just really bad at dealing with the heat as well. So maybe another person wouldn't be complaining about it this much. So anyway, I, um, I'm, I'm loving this dark blue. I'm also loving this sort of purple into the green. I think that's looking really nice. And I don't know what I'm gonna do next. The background color, I've been changing at half of the rate of the foreground color. Um, I don't, that, I know that that's like a, fractal spinning idea to have one change happen twice as fast as the other obviously it's in no other way similar to fractal spinning but i love the way those that color those yarns have the color play so i thought that i would be a little bit inspired by that when i was picking the colors for this i'm having just a really good time i actually think that this is going to be a gift for my very knitworthy dad because I just think that he'd wear it so much. Last time I was saying I wasn't so sure, and now I'm still unsure, but I think that it might. I'm a little bit more leaning to the side of giving it to him. Um, I have one of his jumpers, so I know that it would fit him. And my boyfriend tried this on a few weeks ago, and he said that it was, well, he didn't say this, sorry. Um, it fit him well and he's i think if something fits him well it would probably fit my dad well i guess i don't know they're 
not the same height or body type, but they could pr probably both wear an adult men's medium. So, um, my dad might be a small, but I can always just have the sleeves be a bit shorter, you know? And I have a jumper that he loves. I already said that. So, sizing is going to be fine. The other thing that I don't think I mentioned in my last episode when I spoke about this is that due to the color work combination with the combination with the nudidin, I've been knitting this entirely um, English style because I can't properly tension the nudidin with my left hand. And that's been really nice. It's given my hands a little bit of a break. It's a much more meditative way of knitting, although I do get frustrated by how slow it goes sometimes. But it's been nice, and I'm pro mixing it up a little bit. Um, so here it is. I'm loving it. I don't think that I will work on this very much over the next two weeks because of the weather, but it's here if I want it, and I'm. it's not going to drift into the background. This will be finished eventually, um, as soon as it becomes bearable to have basically a big blanket on your lap at all times. Um, I don't know how much it weighs, but I'm really curious to weigh it at the end and see how much uh, nudidin I've used, and I'll get back to you on that. The other thing is, if I give that to my dad, I will be making another one for myself. I have so much more nudidin, and yeah, this has like been my favorite way of using it so far. So. That would be coming next. I've got one more project to show you, and it's the one that has gotten the most work over the past two weeks, and it is my Harlow sweater by Kadri. This design, this was sort of inspired by a design, by a jumper that I saw a YouTuber, I think Lucy Moon, wearing in one of her videos. I don't watch Lucy Moon's channel, I don't even know what her channel is about, but I saw the thumbnail for it and I just fell in love with the jumper that she was wearing. It looked like, it was like pink and it kind of looked like spin cycle and it was a little bit marly and color shifty and I just wanted one desperately. This was like in October, very long time ago. I never managed to get rid of the idea, so I eventually ordered some spin cycle and I did some swatches. If you want to hear more about this, you can watch my previous videos. I've talked about this a lot. Um, and I settled on these two yarns and the Kadri Harlow sweater pattern. I don't remember what size I'm making, but it is going to have a lot of positive ease. And the only modification to the pattern that I have done so far and and will be doing probably is to make the neck hole a little bit smaller just by picking up more stitches at the back and then casting on less stitches at the front because you knit the back down and then you pick up for the front and then you you start at the I cord visually maybe it'll make sense more so but otherwise I'm knitting it to pattern. Oh, I guess not. I'm knitting it flat. And I'm doing that because I really liked the thickness of the spin cycle color changes and I didn't want to have that by joining in the round under the arms. So knitting it flat. I finished the front and I've made a lot of headway on the back. But let me, let me try it on to show you. So here it is. You can see that it's quite dropped in the shoulder. And it's super washed, so it will stretch out quite a lot more. It's about, I don't know. I don't think this is cropped anymore. I don't think this counts as a cropped jumper, especially since it will stretch being super wash. The colors are not what I envisioned, but I really like them. So I'm, I'm going forward with it. I wanted it to be pink, like, and a little bit of orange, and I've ended up with purple and orange, like dark purple. 
Um, I really, really like it though, but I, it's just not the jumper that I was thinking of. So I think I still have that brain itch of like the pink shifty jumper to knit, but I think I'll try and do that in another way and keep going with this because it's so nice. Um, I'm not sure that I like the way that this color has played out, like with the big stripe here and the rest of it being dark purple. So what I think I'm, I want there to be a little bit more lightness here so that it's not, I don't, yeah, I just don't like the look of the stripe. I want it to look a little bit more cohesive. So what my plan is, because this is a lot of knitting, is once I get to the point in the back where I've knit sort of an equivalent length to here, I'm going to cut one stitch, pick up the stitches on each side, unravel a row and graft this to the back so that this will just be the same but on the back and then I can have some lighter colors here on the front and um, yeah I won't be wasting the knitting that I've done but I will also be switching it up a little bit. I was originally trying to be a little bit more relaxed about the color, what's the word, people's color management people say for spin cycle. And then I, I just decided, no, I've spent so much money on this yarn. I've been wanting this jumper for a very long time. I'm just gonna be as, as meticulous as I want to be. It's already taken forever. It's fine if it takes a little bit more time. Um, so yeah, it's just this big like block of darkness that I don't really like. Especially since, you know, I wonder if anyone agrees with me. Everyone I talk to about this is like, Sarah, don't do that. That's a terrible idea. It's great, just leave it. But I cannot. I am about to the right spot on the back. Maybe another inch of this until I do the graft. And that is that. I am going to the States in about 10 days, and I don't think I'm going to finish this in time, which is really annoying, because <laughs> I really want it to be done. Not that I would bring it, because it's going to be really hot there, but I just want it to be done. <laughs> so, I, yeah, a part of me is like, don't try and finish it before you go. That's really stupid. Don't try and stress yourself out about that. But then another part of me is like, finish it before you go. Spend every free second working on it. So we'll see which part of me wins. Um, I haven't worked on it since I got back from England yesterday. But the day is still young today. The yarns are spin cycle. I can't remember the names of the colorways off the top of my head, but I have mentioned them in previous videos. And the alpaca lace weight that I'm holding the spin cycle with is from Hobby, and it's an alpaca lace weight in like a light pink color. So that's all I've got to show you on this. I think that I will not need to buy any more yarn for this. I think I have enough. It's really heavy. Um, it is just a lot of yarn, I think. I mean, like, what are you supposed to do if you're making a really big jumper? I guess you could use woolen spun instead of worsted spun. Is spin cycle, I think spin cycle is quite a heavy yarn. It's just got quite a bit of heft. Like the, I think I bought eight skeins and this, I don't know why they don't do 100 gram skeins, it's very annoying, but the skeins are like roughly 60 grams each, so that's like roughly 500 grams if I use all eight, plus, well the hobby is really light. So, it's pretty heavy, but I think that will be fine. I don't know. I, I haven't really had this issue in the past. I don't, I don't think that it will impact it in a negative way. 
but it's kind of hard to tell. This lives in this bag. These two bags I got when I made a large order from Lucy and Yak, which is a clothes shop that I really like. The Helix pullover release that I talked about in my last video that I test knit for Jessie Mae Designs, the release date for that was pushed back to July 19th, I think, which is my birthday. Um, so if that was something that you were interested in making and you saw it in my last video and I said that it would come out in a few days, I was misinformed and it will be out in about two weeks from now. An update on the yarn is that I have two and a teeny bit balls of that yarn left over. Let me just get it. Okay, this is what I was talking about. I should have just had it to start with. I made my Helix pullover out of the camera's loved hand and I gave it a scathing review in my last video. And I stand by it to this day. Um, it's a chain knit yarn, but since it's 100% linen, it doesn't have any elasticity. So if you accidentally put the needle into it, into the yarn and it snags, it doesn't, you can't work it back in which is very frustrating because you're, you're sort of ruining something as you're knitting it. Well, I'm going to try knitting the pure mesh tank. It's, it requires exactly the right amount of yarn as I have, and I think it will be really cool. I'm really excited about it. And since it's knit flat and I have two different colors, I'm going to make one, the front one color, and the back the, another color. The front and the back are the same, so it will be reversible. And with a much larger needle size, so I'll probably stab it much less. So, I'm very excited about this. I bought the pattern, but I haven't started knitting it yet, so I'll update you on how it goes when I am knitting it. I don't really know where I'll wear this, because when it's hot, I need to cover my shoulders or I just get burned. It's a, it's a losing battle against sunburn. Um, so I'm not a tank top wearer in the summer at all. It's just like, it's so futile. I cannot apply enough sunscreen to protect my shoulders from sunburn. But maybe like I'll wear it, and if I wear it under a t-shirt, you won't be able to see it. But I still want to make it. If I wear it like under a button down, that could work. And this isn't gonna dissuade me from making it because I don't want to have these two balls of yarn sitting around. I want to turn them into something. So that's an upcoming work in progress that I'm pretty excited about knitting. And I think it might go kind of fast because it's pretty open mesh, but who knows? It's hard to predict that sort of thing. So I haven't bought any yarn in the past two weeks, which is cool. I have been using a lot of yarn and um, nothing is, I, there's, there's, there's just nothing really that I need. Um, when it comes to yarn. I am quite tempted to buy a mohair brush, but we'll see. I have um, a couple like, specific things that I have bought that I want to use up before I buy any more yarn. One of those things is the spin cycle from the um, Harlow jumper. So, no yarn purchases, no urge to make any yarn purchases other than the John Arbin sock yarn, but even that, I'm not even thinking about it until I finish this pair of socks. So I hope that you've enjoyed this video, um, and I'm glad that the sun has come out a bit, and there hasn't been too much wind, so that's pretty good. Hope that it's not too hot where you are, and um, yeah, I will talk to you very soon. Bye!